Because you, you, you don't look like, do you look like that all the time? Or do you have to get ready for these things? No, no, I don't. I, 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 I start training about, I don't know, six months before we start shooting. What's up guys, Derek, moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we're going to be talking about Daniel Craig's body transformation for uh, Casino Royale in particular and what I think he did to prepare for that role. So Daniel Craig has been James Bond for a few movies now and I think there's actually another upcoming one as well. And for some of them, his body composition is slightly different and where I think it peaked was for the 2006 Casino Royale. So that is what we're going to be focusing on in this one in regards to was he natural or not? And if we look at the progression from day one of his career, we can go far as back as when he was 30 years old in Love is the Devil. In this movie, he is not in bad shape considering he doesn't even seem to work out on a regular basis, at least based on his interviews. When preparing for Bond, he kind of explains how he started training only six months out. Do you, you don't look like, do you look like that all the time? Or do you have to get ready for these things? No, no, I don't. I, 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 I start training about, I don't know, six months before we start shooting. He also mentions how they plan the shirtless roles very strategically, which is pretty expected for these uh, celebrity roles. They always peak with, uh, they don't look like this even throughout the duration of filming. They always make sure that they peak for a very specific time to look as good as humanly possible for specific scenes that have to do with them shirtless. What's lucky about it is that we plan out the sort of shirtless scenes quite carefully so I can sort of decarb and do all that sort of really boring stuff. And then the rest of the time I just eat and drink what I want and just try and stay in shape. So for the rest of the movie, he doesn't even stay in that condition, let alone when he's not even recording for the movie. And in another interview, he explains how he didn't even start using weights until three months from shooting. Uh, we had about three months before we started shooting and I just started, I hit the gym. I just hit the gym, I you know, started pumping weights and I started you know, just getting fit because I knew I had to get in shape for the job and that was, otherwise I wouldn't have got through it. And you know, the sort of byproduct of that is sort of looking bigger, bigger and beefier. So going back to the start of his career in his early 30s, Presumably, he doesn't even weight train during these roles. As he says, he starts lifting weights three months out, and even during Casino Royale filming itself, if he wasn't peaking for a shirtless scene, he would start eating and drinking a lot more loosely than he would have been if he was peaking for a specific scene, and he wouldn't be training as hard. So the fact that he loosens up on the diet practices and training regimen, even during filming, when he's not trying to peak, shows just how little he probably actually did earlier in his career when he wasn't even trying to play a guy who's jacked and fit. Now, the interesting thing about that is moving to Tomb Raider in 2001 at 33 years old. I guess this might have been his first notable appearance in a you know more mainstream film. And here, he honestly looks leaner than he does in Casino Royale. Like This is actually a very good physique. And there's not a whole lot of information um, behind his body transformations, even for James Bond prep, let alone some of these older, more obscure roles. But I would think he worked out for this role. Like all of a sudden he has, you know, cat delts. He's striking distance of single digit body fat percentage. He's got the traps popping a little bit. He looks like he's packed on a solid five to 10 pounds of lean tissue since 30 years old in Love is the Devil. Moving forward to the movie in 2003 called The Mother at 35 years old. He obviously has loosened up on his regiment. He's not out of shape by any means, but, you know, he looks like not dad bod status, but he's uh, certainly not the pinnacle of men's fitness in this role. But again, he's not obese by any means whatsoever, nor is he really skinny fat, although he's, you know, well on his way, I believe. He's probably, you know, 16 to 18% body fat here and seems to be holding less muscle mass. Is that just because he's a bit fatter and it looks like he's lost muscle? It's tough to say, but I think uh, if you actually go look at the Tomb Raider role, he did have, not only was he leaner, but I think he was actually holding at least a few pounds more muscle for sure than later throughout his 30s. If he saw this physique, you would not think, oh, this guy is James Bond, obviously. So he played James Bond at 38 years old for Casino Royale, and the closest body shot I could find of him prior to that was for the 2004 movie 
called Layer Cake, and he was 36 years old here. And here we can see him uh, in the kitchen doing something with, uh, I don't know, is he like crushing pills here? And he's sitting on the couch watching TV and pouring himself a drink. And again, he's uh, he looks a bit thinner than he did in his previous role. And I guess more in shape objectively, but it doesn't look like he's packed on any additional size since the previous role. But he's certainly closer to what he was in the Tomb Raider role. And, you know, by most people's standards would be considered a fit man for his late 30s. Not that late 30s is old by any means, but... The majority of the population is just out of shape and looks like shit. And here he is, you know, looks athletic despite pouring himself a glass of alcohol on the screen. He looks athletic and um, and not thin to the point that he is, you know, emaciated like a fucking Christian Bale in The Machinist or something. But, you know, he looks like he exercises and eats well or you know, potentially just takes drugs and doesn't eat properly. But I don't really know what the context was behind this role. Either way, he looks better than he did in the previous role in 2003. So now two years later is when Casino Royale premiered in 2006. So he's 38 years old there. And this is where his physique, I believe, peaked for the entirety of his career. And we already know he said that he started training six months out. And he also said he didn't even touch weights until three months out. And we also know that he's pretty loose on adhering to strict diet and training principles with the fact that I know if I was playing James Bond, I sure as fuck would not be letting my foot off the gas at all throughout the entire filming process, regardless if I had a shirtless scene or not. So when we see these shots of him in the water here, these are the iconic James Bond moments that everyone wants to know. Did he take gear to look like this? You have to understand first and foremost that he doesn't even look like this for the for the rest of the movie itself that he was filming. So this isn't even indicative of what his physique actually looks like throughout the filming process, let alone before and after the role. Is he more muscular than he was in his previous roles? Yeah, he's definitely bigger than he was even in Tomb Raider. He's probably 15 pounds heavier, and the majority of it looks like solid weight. He's not as lean, in my opinion, or it could just be the lighting, because he's in less flattering lighting being outdoors, as opposed to in Tomb Raider. He's all glazed up and in heavy downlighting, so perhaps it's actually a similar body fat percentage, but muscle-wise, you know, he's at least holding another 10 pounds of lean tissue for sure. And you can see the development most notable in the traps, which is potentially a genetic strong point for him, but also could potentially indicate exogenous hormone use, because we do know that the greatest density of androgen receptors is in the traps, which is why you'll often see androgen using men having disproportionately big traps relative to the rest of their bodies. They'll have, you know, tiny ass arms, tiny ass chest, tiny ass back, and then their traps are just fucking massive for no reason. Now, a lot of people would look at the physique objectively and think, okay, this physique looks great, but it doesn't look that insane. It doesn't look like you would need gear to achieve this, but you have to understand the time frame. It's not like you just take gear and explode and gain 30 pounds overnight. It's a process of years and years, like even bodybuilders who get to, you know, 240 plus, those guys took years of taking gear, packing on five to 10 pounds of muscle per year. So for a guy, even if he took one cycle to prepare for James Bond, what are you going to expect them to gain? It might be, you know, you're going to hyper respond to your first cycle and you'll gain maybe 10 pounds of muscle if you're lucky. But the thing that kind of convolutes the interpretation though of the body progression is that Craig claims he doesn't even lift weights when he's not preparing for a James Bond role or something like that. And presumably he did train with weights for the Tomb Raider role too, but it's not like he's crazy out of shape in any of his roles previously. And even moving forward to... 2008 at 40 years old he looks like he's lost probably 10 to 15 pounds again but his body fat percentage isn't way off the mark but again he was also doing that role during the same time frame as quantum of solace at 40 years old as well in 2008 so potentially he sort of just you know lumped those two roles together and probably had a similar body composition for the two of them indirectly like perhaps he wasn't training on purpose for flashbacks of a fool in 2008 maybe it was more so that he had quantum of solace so obviously you need to be in shape for that you can't just hit the shitter and then within you know however many months transform well i guess you could because he seems to do it but i mean if it's that close together i highly doubt he wouldn't have been training for both of them and in quantum of solace he certainly does not look as good as he did 
in Casino Royale. Like, again, his physique looks great. He has a decent chest. The traps are significantly downsized, though. The body composition is similar. He's not a whole lot leaner or anything. It looks like he's just dropped about you know, 10 pounds, and he still has a great athletic looking physique by all means, but comparing it flat out to the Casino Royale physique, it's just a totally different story. In 2011, in the movie Cowboys and Aliens, he was 43 here, and apparently he had dropped down to 160 pounds body weight for this role. I don't believe the source that I found that from is necessarily a credible um, source. The source for that, though, that I use was coincidentally, funnily enough, Kinobody.com, where Daniel Craig stands 5'10 tall and was down to 160 pounds for Cowboys and Aliens. As you can see, Craig appears very slim and lacks the muscular and dominant frame that he displayed as James Bond. Craig actually lost weight on purpose for this role as he felt he needed to be scrawny to play a cowboy. He accomplished this by eating a low-calorie diet in conjunction with absolutely no weightlifting and consequently lost a good deal of muscle. The studio was not happy with Craig's weight loss and thus ordered him to gain weight for Skyfall. If you look at his physique and Cowboys and Aliens, for a guy who doesn't lift at all, this does not <laughs> look too shabby. I wish I looked like this before I lifted, even when I was 20 years old, let alone at 43. So, I don't know, like, would he even lie about training? Like, it's one thing to lie about being on gear or not, but to lie about even using weights. I don't know if you want to make yourself come across as a genetic specimen or not, but to claim that you're not even weight training and your chest is fucking better than mine is like, um, this guy obviously has top tier genetics in that case. Moving forward to Dream House in 2011, I don't know how much longer after Cowboys and Aliens this was filmed or if it was during the same time frame and this was just a flattering lighting circumstance for Cowboys and Aliens and he depleted for it or what, but he looked leaner in it and more muscular than he did in Dream House, but it's not significantly different. And moving to 2012 in Skyfall, he packs on a, biggest, a bit of size again, but the body fat percentage is not way off the mark and you could certainly jump to the conclusion that just getting back in the gym and lifting weights again is what was the catalyst for gaining the significant amount of this muscle coming back on his frame through muscle memory. And some of the motivation behind Craig's training apparently wasn't even just for reflecting the body composition that he feels James Bond should have, but it was also to be able to handle the intense scenes, the fighting scenes, the action stunts, and all that kind of stuff. And I started, you know, just getting fit because I knew I had to get in shape for the job, and that was otherwise I wouldn't have got through it. And you know, the sort of byproduct of that is sort of looking bigger, bigger and beefier. But I, I wanted that. Even you know, if he took his shirt off, I wanted it to look like he, he was capable of doing what, what he was doing. So part of the motivation wasn't just to look a certain way, but also functionality-wise which sort of further reinforces the fact that this guy doesn't seem to give a fuck unless he's trying to peak for a role. He doesn't really train when he's not trying to be James Bond, or at least that's what he implies through these interviews. As far as the diet model followed too, this is what I found really interesting is we're so used to hearing the chicken broccoli rice diet, blah, blah, blah. You eat six meals of chicken, rice, and broccoli every day, and I train for seven fucking hours a day. But... They actually detail not exactly what he ate, but his macro allotments and his breakdown of his diet. And it's a lot more reasonable than many of these other actors that have gone on record with their macronutrient distributions. According to the trainer, Craig followed a high protein, low carbohydrate diet. The percentage of each of his meals was about 50% protein, 30% healthy fat, and 20% carbohydrates. The diet plan was enforced to ensure the maximum infusion of the protein was taken during the workout. He has to drink about two liters of water and also quit smoking. As for his exercise routine, he trained five times a week. His workout routine mainly involved a lot of circuit training and cardio workouts. So it sounds like he followed a reasonable diet model with a reasonable training plan that was designed not only to enhance his athleticism, but also his body composition simultaneously. And when you compare his baselines, even at his worst physiques, he's not for a guy who is a newbie to the gym, essentially, or pretty much makes himself a newbie by detraining for several years at a time, and then only gets back in the gym lifting weights for specific acute preparation periods for James Bond roles. It's honestly pretty reasonable to think that he may have not done anything at all for any of these roles. The only thing that makes me a bit skeptical is when you compare the fact that for Casino Royale, he is more beefy by a fairly significant amount relative to 
Quantum of Solace, as well as Skyfall. So it's not way off the mark, but it's enough that makes me question, if you know what goes into the preparation of this, why is the physique variable between the three time frames? Is it just age and that, you know, you're naturally you're slightly regressing during each subsequent prep? That would be a logical conclusion and honestly might explain it. So to be honest, even while I'm talking, I'm sort of going back and forth on the fence with this one. But my guess would be at most, at absolute most, this guy may be on TRT starting from his mid 30s to sustain that decent body composition, even with a lack of training from his mid thirties onwards and to make these preps a lot smoother and a lot easier to transition from being totally detrained to blowing up with 10 to 15 pounds of lean weight within a three month weight training time frame. Again though, when you're totally natural and haven't done anything in the gym, you can gain a lot in a short period of time and experience steroid-like results even without gear. So for a guy who looks the way he does in some of these other roles in his earlier 30s where he wasn't Bond and presumably, according to him, not using weights, not doing anything, or at least it isn't on record, it might be within reason to speculate that he was natural throughout this time. But if I was to play it safe, I would probably have to bet that he was on TRT at least and probably still is. Now, that may be a bit of a reach, and to be honest, it's reasonable that he's natural. There are a lot of guys who have physiques even better than this that are natural, but just the progression and the way his body composition has gone up and down, the background behind the way he trains or the complete lack thereof, it leads me to believe that there may be something that is allowing him to hold on to such a good body with a complete absence of sufficient stimulus to maintain that body composition. Because for a guy who is in his mid-30s even for some of these roles, for a guy who hasn't hit the gym at all, his body composition does not reflect that of a natural who does not even lift weights whatsoever. And of course, it's probably reasonable to jump to the conclusion that he did train with weights for Tomb Raider and some of the other roles, but just the way he describes how even during filming of Casino Royale, if he's not trying to literally show up on camera shirtless, he's already loosening it up. I can't even imagine how loose he is on his training and diet when he's not preparing for a role. He's got to pretty much go back to baseline. That seems to be reflected in some of his other roles in his mid-30s where he's not playing James Bond. But again, even his baseline isn't that bad. So my educated guess is that this guy's on TRT. Obviously, I don't know for sure, and I could be completely wrong. And if you guys have your own insight, it'd be much appreciated if you could drop a comment down below. The comments all help the algorithm and help push the video to a new audience that may not otherwise see it and grow the channel. You could also like, that helps too. If you want to follow me on other social media, I'm on Instagram and I post unique stuff there sometimes. So I uh, encourage you to follow me there, at moreplates underscore more dates. I'm also on Facebook and the organic reach there completely sucks. So this video, even if it gets thousands of views here on Facebook, it'll probably get like a hundred because the algorithm there is trash. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, that would help grow the brand there as well. Um, wherever else I am, Snapchat, Twitter, BitChute, TikTok, wherever I am, it's much appreciated if you diversify onto those platforms to follow me there. If you want to support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, if you are seeking hormone optimization and feel you would benefit from having your health status assessed for potential imbalances or deficiencies, I compel you to reach out to them, talk to a patient care coordinator, have them get your bloods drawn, have your bloods evaluated by our doctor who can meet with you over Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, whatever it is. Um, it's all telemedicine, so it's very convenient. And from there, have your bloods um, deep dived into and you can get a interpretation of all of your biomarkers, see if you have any potential deficiencies or imbalances that may warrant addressing for maximizing your current quality of life and longevity and health status. In addition to that, my turnkey nootropic and pre-workout formulas, if you are a student, a working individual, anyone who would otherwise benefit from a productivity boost, an energy boost, a focus boost, a mental clarity boost. That's basically what the new tropics are designed for. They're great for, you know, preparing business presentations, studying for exams, students, 
editors or whatever it is, I recommend checking out the nootropics if productivity and focus is what you are seeking. Pre-workout formula, self-explanatory. I write these out on a Word document myself from scratch and I compel you to compare the label of your current pre-workout to mine. And I think it's pretty transparent why I am so adamant about ours being a top of the industry product and anything else I'm associated with is in the video description below as well. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.